Okay, a differential equation is just a fancy way of them saying, here's the derivative, tell me what the original function is. Okay, uh, <clears throat> bless you. So we need to rearrange some things a little bit because our variables need to be the same thing on each side. So um, right now we have, we need to move the dx over. So we've got dy is equal to 3 over 2 minus x times dx. We're trying to find the original, so we're going to integrate both sides. Well, the antiderivative of, remember, that's just like there's a 1 right there, 1 dy. So with respect to y, that's going to give us y on the left side. The right side, that is a natural log problem, okay, because the denominator um, has uh, negative x plus 2 in it. So I'm not going to do the u substitution. I think that we should be getting the hang of that by now. Um, in this case, it would be negative 3 natural log of the absolute value of 2 minus x plus c. The negative comes from the factor that is minus x. The 3 is just the constant in front. Okay, remember you can always take the derivative to check. So that would be negative 3 times 1 over 2 minus x times negative 1. We end up with 3 over 2 minus x. Okay, um, so they want us to find the particular solution. That's why they give us this piece of information right here. The function, when x is 1, the function equals 0. So plug that in. Okay, x is 1, y is 0. And we're going to solve for c. So we get uh, negative 3 times the natural log of 2 minus 1 is 1. Well, what is the natural log of 1? 0. So that says 0 is our C. So our particular solution is Y equals negative 3 natural log of the absolute value of 2 minus X. C was 0, so we don't have anything stuck on the end there. Okay. Uh, let's do number 39 as well got a trig function in it. They give us the differential equation ds over d theta is equal to the tangent of 2 theta. The initial condition is 0, 2. When x is 0, y is 2. So again, our variables need to be paired up, so we're going to move that d theta to the other side. We're going to integrate both sides. So we get S on the left side. On the right side, um, we could do some U substitution, but it's very simple. So I'm just going to bring the 1 half out front. What is the integral of the tangent? Thank you. Negative natural log of the cosine of U, in this case, 2 theta plus c. Okay, the one half came from the fact that if we take the derivative of that, we're going to have to multiply by a 2, so we need that to cancel out because there was not a 2 in front of that tangent. Okay, so that's the general solution. Just using some vocab here. That's the general solution. We need the particular solution. So, um, well, hang on, not really x and y in this case. That would be theta and s in this case. 2 is equal to negative 1 half natural log of the absolute value of cosine of 2 times 0. I'm going to go ahead and move that negative uh, 1 half to the other side, so multiply by negative 2. So we've got negative 4 is equal to the natural log of um, the cosine of 0 is what? 1. And the natural log of 1 is 0, so negative 4 is our C, so our particular solution is S is equal to negative 1 half natural log of the absolute value 
of cosine of 2 theta minus 1. My bad. Okay, right here, okay, I made a mistake. You cannot get rid of that negative uh, one-half unless you multiply the entire thing by negative two, including C. So that means um, this needs to be negative two is equal to one-half times the natural log of one plus C. The natural log of one is zero, so two is our C, not uh, negative four. I apologize. Thank you, Al. And you should always check it, okay? You should always check it. When you get right here, plug your x, or in this case, theta back in, and make sure that you get x, okay? If I plugged in 0 right here, sometimes 0 is 0, cosine 0 is 1, natural log 1 is 0, so all this is 0, so this should be my s. Okay, uh, one more problem that I want us to do, and I have a handout that goes with it. Um, okay, so if we're going to uh, solve this, um, we need to integrate dy is equal to 1 over x plus 2 dx. You should recognize that as a natural log problem. So the general solution is y is equal to the natural log of x plus 2 plus c. So this slope field is representing all of those possibilities for plus c. If you kind of look at it, I know some of you are more visual than others, but you can kind of tell that the curvature of this kind of takes the shape of the natural log function, right? It's really steep over here. And it becomes less steep over here. So if we were to kind of follow one of these lines, it would look like a natural log function. Um, now, the reason why it is uh, goes all the way over here to negative 2 is because it's the natural log of x plus 2. That shifts your function. Remember doing transformations of functions in pre-calc? That shifts our function to the left 2. Um, so it is possible to have some negative values right here. If, if uh, x were negative 1, negative 1 plus 2 is a possible one, you're still OK. Right, but we do have this vertical axis for the negative two. Um, can't go past that. Yes. Can you, take you cannot take the natural log of a negative number. Okay. Because that's what I just explained. If x is negative one, what are we actually plugging in? Negative two. Right. So negative two is negative one. Right. So we need to take the natural log of negative one. So in this case, x equals negative one is okay because we're not actually evaluating the natural log of negative 1. When um, x is negative 1, we're evaluating the natural log of possible. Okay. So it couldn't could go negative. Right. Okay. Right. Negative 2 is our cutoff. Okay. Um, so they want to know what is the particular solution at this point right here, 0, 1. What is the particular solution at 0, 1? Um, so solve it just like we've been solving it. Okay. Uh, plug in 1 for y, 0 for x, so 1 is equal to the natural log of 2 plus c, so our, our c value is 1 minus the natural log of 2. And that's all we can do with that. So our particular solution is y is equal to the natural log of x plus 2 plus 1 minus the natural log of 2. Yes, that's kind of a long problem, but that's what it is. Technically, we could use some properties of logarithms if we wanted to to uh, simplify things. Bless you. You could combine those two logarithms. Since it's minus the natural log of 2, that turns into division in a single logarithm. Okay, if you really wanted to, that's probably how the answer would appear as an answer choice. Okay. Um, so that is um, part.
part B, use integration to find the particular solution of the differential equation. Uh, part A says sketch two approximate solutions of the differential equation um, of the slope field, one of which passes through the indicated point. Now, the way that you use a slope field to sketch something, if they give you a point to start at, you kind of use that line there as your starting place. And it helps if you kind of take your piece of paper, um, let me use my here, and put it along that line and see where the next little slope field line that it touches is. Um, it looks like it's this line right here. So that's going to change my slope. So I'm going to follow that line to um, that point. Wait, which one did I just do? To that one. Okay, then I'm going to follow the slope of that line to see which next one I hit. Yes, it's supposed to have a curve to it. It's not perfectly good. It's fine. You're just sketching. Okay? And that kind of levels off. Um, I can do the same thing to go down here to the left. Okay, so our problem is down here to the left. Um, I'll this one right here. And then I'm approaching that vertical asymptote right there. So you can see that kind of looks like the natural log function. Okay, you're just kind of following the little segments. It should lead you to the next one. So that is the particular solution. That's the sketch of the particular solution. Um, we could pick any other point to start at. Um, say we wanted to know, well, what if our um, initial condition was uh, 1, 0? What would our function look like then? Well, you can do the same thing. You just kind of follow, follow the those tangent lines, and you can sketch. You can sketch what the function would look like. Just kind of follow the slope of those lines because that's what a slope field is. What they've done, what these little segments represent, is if I'm at the point one zero, x is one, y is zero. So I plug in 1 for x right here, I get 1 over 3. That line right there represents a slope of 1 third. Okay? Um, over here, at negative 2, anywhere when x is negative 2, we've got negative 2 plus 2, that's 0, that's undefined. Undefined slope is a vertical line. Um, we don't have, it's impossible for this to equal 0, right? It's impossible for the slope to be 0 because then the numerator has to be the numerator is 1, it's never equal to 0. So we, we won't have any horizontal lines in our slope field, but we'll have some that are near horizontal. You'll notice that as we go further out, if we zoomed out a little bit more, went to like 5 or 6, um, those lines would be getting closer and closer to horizontal. Uh, but that's just a short little introduction to slope fields. We will start tomorrow.